No matter how nice or expensive the DualSense Edge is, there are a few things I wish I knew earlier about it. And I'm gonna share them with you. The first tip is the back buttons are the most responsive and probably the fastest way to shoot for non-automatic weapons in most cases. One of the good features of Edge is adjustable zones for L2 and R2, but those zones still are big even on zone 3. You have so much space to deal with. And that was the reason I was usually recommending R1 for shooting instead of R2 because that's a non-pressure sensitive button with 0 and 1 input. Still due to design shape and how you use the controller, it still takes some time to use it. While using the back buttons, this zone of change is much more limited, there is much less space and I found using the lever shape very fast to press for shooting. Then I noticed no matter how good you are on that, it's harder to use your ring finger for the faster press while having other fingers on R1 and R2. So it was crazy fast sometimes and other times like my finger was lagging. What I did was trying the other shape and I found the half doom buttons is the same. The issue is with controlling my ring fingers. Due to days of trying, I found that R1 is still the fastest way to shoot for the games that need to reach zero input while holding my controller like this. But it's not like that in every game. That's why we're gonna test the most popular games and see how to achieve the fastest rapid fire. But for now, create a profile in your controller settings, name it R2 R1 flipped. Flip them and use any other button you like for the back buttons. I usually go with X and O. I would also recommend flipping L1 and L2 to be more precise. Turn off the vibration if you want to have the most control. I found it easier without vibration. For the trigger effect, leave it on. And I will tell you what to do instead. Trigger effect and weapon threshold in games. Even if you turn off the trigger effect in the edge settings on PS5, it will not help with dead zone. Some games like Call of Duty will add a realistic weapon threshold when the trigger effect is active meaning when you push the R2, regardless of your controller settings, it will not affect until it passes that zone. To fix that, you must turn off trigger effect in the controller settings in most games to remove that threshold in case that you use R2. If you swap R2 to R1, there will be no issues, but if for any reason you want to use R2, turn off the trigger effect in the game settings, not the console. The next tip is there is more audio noise when you use the controller with a USB cable to the console and using the AUX port for audio. However, However, considering that the controller has an overall lower input lag with USB, it'll worth it in my opinion. To ensure your controller is using USB connection, check this icon in accessories section. If you don't see it, go to the controller settings, select general section, and change communication method to use a USB cable. That'll fix the problem. The controller's battery life is usually so low and it usually dries in less than five hours for me. So using a USB cable is fine. And some people ask me, is it okay to be connected all the time if the battery is full? Yes, it will be fine. It won't charge when it's on 100% and will pass through the power for the controller to function. So don't worry about that. But if you are using your controller with the USB cable, all the time, I recommend using it with Bluetooth once a month at least and let the battery dry so the cells won't die. If you ever wanted to charge your controller with a wall or phone adapter, ensure that the adapter output is only 5V and max 2 ampere. Anything higher than that can kill your controller, especially the fast chargers. I recommend charging it with the official charging station or the console itself. You can always use a headset and mic adapter to use a separate microphone on the controller if you want to use a high quality microphone. But again, it works fine with the wireless mode. I found it noisy when you connect it with a USB cable. No matter how good your controller works, you can test the stick drift on day one by going to the controller settings and a stick sensitivity dead zone section. On a default profile, check if this curve goes up on its own a little bit. Very little is fine, like this much is fine. But more than that means you have a stick drift and you better replace the controller. Also try rotation in various directions and stop it to see if it has any drift, sudden moves and things as you do in the game. To test it precisely, set the dead zone to 4%. In most new controllers, up to 4% stick drift is normal. But if it goes over 4% and you see the blue line passes 4%, you should really consider returning the controller. Or if it's not a new controller, you should change the stick module. Another tip is you don't have to use the official cable. You can also get 
a USB-C to USB-C cable and connect it to the front port and it works fine with no issues. If you are wondering about the input delay, it's the same as back ports and you can also put any standard cable in the locker module and connect it to the controller. Keep in mind the mute button on the controller can't mute the Pulse 3D microphone but holding it can mute all input and output devices. Replacement for an analog stick costs around $30 where I live but you can buy it from Sony for $20 while you can replace a normal DualSense stick with something like $10 at repair centers. So if you want this controller only because of the stick replacement, it might not be the cheapest option but it's definitely the easiest way. Now it's a part that you need to use the chapters. I'm gonna share my personal settings in different games for DualSense Edge. The games I'll cover in this part of the video will be Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Overwatch 2, and Rogue Company. In the next part of the video, I'll cover Apex Legends, Fortnite, Battlefield 2042, Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, and Rainbow Six. If the game you are playing is not covered, I'm pretty sure it would use a similar system to some of these games. So watch them and see which one is likely to work for your game. If there is a specific game you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments section. Beside the games I already mentioned, starting with the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I personally use X on the left back button and circle on the right back button, as I use them frequently and I want to keep my finger on the aim all the time. For the stick sensitivity dead zone, I use the default for the left stick, but for the right stick, I use Quick Plus 2 for the curve adjustment. I also kept the vibration off in game sensitivity at 8 for both horizontal and vertical, ADS at 1.5 which is good for me, Philip L2 R2 with L1 R1 is flipped, and believe it or not I use these settings combined with reversed S curve in the game which is dynamic mode. You can adjust the sensitivity if it's slow or fast for you and try other modes. These are just my settings. I kept trigger effect disabled, left stick mean input threshold on 0, right stick mean input threshold on 0 and L2 and R2 to dead zone on 0.3. As I use them for grenade and stun or steam, I don't want accidental process. Interact reload behavior prioritizing interact is good for me. Now let's talk about Overwatch 2. This game is a little different. It has fixed speeds for shooting with rapid weapons. Regardless of pressing them or holding, you will get the same amount of speed on consoles. They wanted to make it fair, I guess, but you can bypass that in a way that I show you now. For example, if I play with Cassidy, regardless of holding R1 or pressing it, it will have the same speed. Then how did I do this? Watch and learn. Looks crazy, huh? Pretty fast. Crazy. I don't know if it's against the TOS, try it, and if you got banned, I'm not responsible for that. I don't do it in my main account. We use a technique called redundancy for this game. I call it cheating R2. You can also try it for other games. Set R2 to one of the back buttons and in the trigger dead zone set the R2 range from 90 to 100. Use zone 3 in controller physical lock and remember you want to press the back button first and then push R2 and you have to practice a little. If they are being pushed at the same time it will not work. You want that delay which you learn with a little practice. I'm not perfect at doing this either but I'm good enough to show you that it works. Let's have a look at a detail analysis. Anyways, here's a tip, if your ping is under 20 milliseconds or above 100 milliseconds, this will not work. I think it's due to some timing and server mismatches, so this method is only good when your ping is in a range between 50 to 100 milliseconds. Around 100 milliseconds works the best for me. The second tip, it won't work for every weapon. For example, if you try it with BAP, the weapon will glitch and causes worse shooting rounds, mostly good for pistols. The trigger effect won't add any dead zone to L2 and R2 in Overwatch 2 so you can use it if you like. The next one I want to cover is Rogue Company. First, if your screen supports 120 FPS, use this option to get much lower input delay and faster response time. This game also needs input 0 before it shoots another round. As I was testing with cheating R2 profile, I noticed it doesn't work here, as if you do that, it will consider both as one input, which is typical, and by that you may notice your weapon isn't shooting if one of those two buttons are kept and not released before pushing the other. So 
what about R1? It wasn't as fast. What I found is using the controller zone 3 and limiting R2 from 81 to 86 is possibly the fastest way to shoot. Keep in mind you have to practice a little to get used to it. As the zone is limited both physically and with software, you should be able to shoot very fast. Here you can see my button assignments too. Here are my controller settings. Keep in mind I'm a long range player so I use slow aim speed. I also kept dead zone to a low value but if you have a stick drift make it higher. I don't use motion sensor mode however it's very cool. It can make you faster if you know how to use it. But not good for me right now. The reason I stopped the video here is while I was testing these games I've noticed there is a way to get easier control over recoil on your DualSense Edge with some stick curve settings and the game settings. Depending on on your weapon. Here's how the recoil normally is when you push R2 for this weapon. And after making some curve adjustments, it requires less control in Y axis for the recoil. I don't say it's cheating anti-recoil, no, but for the first 4% of the input it requires less push to control that recoil which is great. There must be different configurations for weapons and games to achieve that. And I wasn't sure how much you would like it, that's why I made a poll for it. It takes a lot of time and effort to do it. If this video gets enough attention, I will start doing it as soon as possible. And I will put the link of the part 2 of rapid fire settings for the rest of the games here and in the comments section as soon as it's ready.